Them touchdown pass. Peyton bounces around, throws. The ball will be caught. Julius Thomas, touchdown, Denver. What's up, guys? On this segment of Beyond the Sport, I'm going to be talking about some MLB. The MLB draft took place today and will conclude tomorrow. And I'm going to specifically focus on first overall selection, Spencer Torkelson. If you're not familiar uh, with me and the school that I go to, I'm currently attending Arizona State University. And I was on the baseball coverage team for Blaze Radio and Blaze Sports. And I had the privilege of watching an incredible player during my time there before the season was, of course, canceled and all Pac-12 and NCAA play had been diminished. But for the time being that, uh, that I was able to take it all in and be a writer for that coverage team, I was really able to watch a once-in-generational player and I can't wait to break up this video and kind of just describe my thoughts, my opinions on what I saw from him, and just kind of give an idea as to what the Detroit Tigers got in Spencer Torkelson. Yes, indeed, with that first overall selection, the Detroit Tigers in this year's 2020 draft took Spencer Torkelson, first baseman out of ASU, but if you notice and if you watch the broadcast, they actually classified him as a third baseman. That's what Rob Manfred said. That's what Detroit had said to um, classify him as as far as his position goes and based on that the reasoning for what they said is he's a very versatile defender they liked his quickness and his lateral agility and they think that he can play it and I'm someone who was able to watch him for the sample size that I was able to I think I can confirm that but what's so interesting about that and the fact that he could obviously play that I mean he is the first overall selection so you hope that you know he could be pretty versatile in the infield he's a guy that's definitely more than capable of doing just that but the thing with Torkelson is he's known for his ability at the plate his power uh, his ability to spread the ball around and he's a guy that was so feared by pitchers throughout the nation it did not matter who went up against him on the mound on any given day they just didn't want to pitch to the guy <laughs> plain and simple and this was a guy that if you look at the numbers pitchers were trying to pitch away from him they wanted nothing to do with him because if you give it anywhere near his sweet spot, he was almost guaranteed to hit a torque bomb, as they called it, at ASU. Uh, and the fan base got to celebrate big time with him because he was constantly doing that. He showed great power and great exit velo as he would absolutely crush balls. I mean, when you talk about ASU greats, Barry Bonds is one of those guys that comes to mind, obviously the all-time home run leader. And, you know, not trying to compare him to Barry Bonds or anything like that, but this guy has great power coming out of college the way that Barry did and the way that he did in the league. Obviously, there's people with their opinions about him and steroids. I'm not even going to get into that. Uh, we're going to avoid that. just wanted to mention him because that's a name that comes up a lot with Torkelson because he's just such a good prospect. He was the fourth Sun Devil to be selected first overall in the draft, and he's a guy that is a really exciting player because anytime he comes up to the plate, something big can happen. Even if there's no runners on, he's going to find a way to produce. And it, just looking at his numbers, it, they're just incredible. And it was such a small sample size being that the season did end it the way it did, but he was able to produce at a high rate. And what's so interesting about him is, like I said, he was intentionally walked so many times. I think there was one game where I was watching, obviously taking it in as a writer for the team, and I was taking game notes and all that. Uh, on a per inning basis and it just seemed like every plate appearance he was getting intentionally walked and it was just one of the most unique things I've ever seen because there's so many great hitters that I watch in the MLB where you know they might get intentionally walked based on the circumstances of runners being on the bases depending on the outs there's a whole lot of variables that go into why pitchers intentionally walk guys and with him there could be no one on there could even be bases loaded and they would still rather they get the, the free run to the opposing team for ASU so that they wouldn't have to deal with him and his ability to go yard at any given moment. And he was just such a fun player to watch. And I, I'm I'm happy for him. Obviously, as a, a Sun Devil myself, props to him. Alika Williams was also another guy that got drafted, another very good infielder uh, for ASU. They had a loaded team. It's unfortunate to see the way that things went with the season as they had a loaded roster. But you know, so many things can be said about Torkelson and what he was able to do at the plate. When you look at the situation, too, it just seems so perfect and so fitting because although he was listed as a third baseman and maybe he will play that with the Tigers or at least go into the minors with that approach, 
Um, he's a guy where he's going to essentially be the one that's going to have to replace Miguel Cabrera, one of the all-time great first basemen that this league's ever seen. And the Detroit fans have been accustomed to watching excellent play at first base with him there. A triple crown winner, you name it, all the accolades that Miggy has. And it just it's just so unfair almost to every other team to think that as soon as he goes on out, as soon as his numbers continue to take a little bit of a step back from him being back in his prime and having some absurd numbers, still putting up good numbers, but not the same Miggy we're used to seeing. This is a guy that's going to get replaced at some point and talk about a smooth transition to have Torkelson because he's a guy that I think is so MLB ready and is such a highly touted prospect. I've heard from just about everyone around the MLB where this is a guy where they think it'll take one to two years and he's already going to be called up to the big league and he's going to make a name for himself. And I think it's just really exciting. Um, I know a Detroit Tigers fan myself. I know he's excited about it. He goes to ASU as well. But um, they, they got themselves a good one. And I'm excited to watch him play because that versatility was really interesting because he played first base at ASU all of last season. And he's a guy that could show that he could play other positions in the infield. I just thought it was really strange that they list him as a third baseman. Obviously, it's not that big a deal. They're still figuring out things. They don't know where he's going to play. And he's a guy that just wants to win. Um, from, you know, being around him in post-game press conferences and head coach Tracy Smith for the Sun Devils, uh, he always said he just wants to win. He's willing to do what it takes. So I know that he'd be ready to accept that role at third base should Detroit want him to go there. I know I'd have to ask my friend who is uh, the Tigers fan to ask him what he thinks about that and the farm system that you know they currently have going on there. I know that he was telling me ahead of the draft that they were very pitcher heavy. The farm system's got a lot of young, talented pitchers and Torgelson was simply a no-brainer of a selection even though there's so many good picks and this is one of the better drafts in the last couple of years in comparison to previous years. Um, but Torkelson is a guy that it doesn't matter where you put him in. He wants to win, and you know Detroit's not in a good spot right now as a franchise. Obviously, that's the reason they have this first overall pick and had a chance to get Torkelson, but I know that that's a great foundational piece to work along with, and you really can't ride it any better. You really can't have a better choice than to have a guy like Torkelson if you are Detroit. Another funny story that I actually have in relation to covering ASU baseball uh, this previous season, and with Torkelson specifically, being that he is the center of discussion right now, not only in this video, but in the MLB world as the first overall pick. But uh, something funny that I have for him is just knowing how good he was, what kind of player he was, especially after back in 2019, the season that he had, there was so much reason to get excited and be hyped about him as a player. And he completely lived up to that because I remember in one of the first couple at bats, I don't remember exactly if it was the first at bat of the season for him. I don't know why it's blanking me. It kind of bothers me that I don't remember that. I'm usually pretty good at remembering these kind of things, but pretty much the situation is I'm covering the team and it's the not only the home opener, but it's the season opener. So they're at uh, Sun Devil Phoenix Municipal Stadium and it's his uh, plate appearance. I don't know if it was his first or his second. It might have been his first, but regardless of the point, I got to stop dwelling on that, even though it bothers me that I can't think of it. Um, what's most important is I had my phone out, and I hadn't done this for any other player, and there's so many great players in what was a loaded ASU roster to potentially get my phone out to film because I was doing live tweets throughout the game uh, while I was trying to write uh, my recap of the game, and while I was doing so, I just saw Torkelson come up to the plate and I was like, you know what, I'm going to take my phone out, I'm going to open up photos, and I'm going to record this at bat just in case something happens, in case there's a little bit of fireworks in the air. And sure enough, I get it out, I position it, and I'm watching uh, partly through both the camera lens of my phone, and I'm watching the game, obviously, with my own eyes. And sure enough, he goes uh, deep to uh, left field, crushes a ball, everyone's going crazy. It was the first... Uh, run up on the board for the team first one of the season and the first torque bomb uh, as they like to call it over there at ASU but he absolutely crushed it got it all on video 
I got him going around the bases and everything, and it was a really cool video, and I was always super bummed because I didn't put it on the Twitter uh, account so that people could see it, whoever was checking out the live tweets for the game who couldn't make it out to the game. And unfortunately, I somehow got deleted. That's one of the most mysterious parts of the story. Uh, so pretty much the video got deleted, and I couldn't show it because I, I was just uh, joking around with all of my other colleagues from other uh, media networks, uh, just saying how, go figure, right? Like, Torkelson shows up right on cue, had the phone out and everything, and it was just, it really set the tone, I guess, more than anything for the season that he was going to have and the kind of player that he was coming into the season. And uh, this was a guy that, keep in mind, uh, he went undrafted out of high school, and uh, he had a chip on his shoulder, and he went out there and absolutely killed it for ASU, put up some incredible numbers. And it was really cool, though, to be able to capture a moment like that. It, and I really, I kicked myself for not having that video on my phone because it was just such a cool moment, especially for me, being on my first coverage team at ASU. But it was, uh, I guess, my favorite Spencer Torkelson moment while covering the team. So pretty much... With this video, I thought it'd be cool to make one in relation to this MLB Draft's a huge topic of discussion because it's the other major sport league besides the NFL to hold their draft. It was cool to hear his name for someone like myself that got a chance to watch him in person because I know how legit he is and I know that Detroit got themselves a good one. Uh, so I thought this would be a fun little video for that reason because of the connection that I have. Uh, at ASU in with him as the first overall pick but thanks everyone for watching make sure to follow at beyond the sport I haven't been doing any Instagram live sessions on Instagram but I do plan on continuing to put bonus content on there just stuff that you can't see on YouTube uh, just little stuff especially stuff like post notifications essentially that say when I'm going to upload videos so make sure to follow that above there it is that's the handle make sure to check that out give it a follow and uh, just be ready for any posts that I have in the coming days. But thanks again, as always, for joining me, and have a good one.